Thank you for choosing CTN. And now, it's time with Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank, Thank you everybody. so much for joining us. If you've noticed, that's an English accent, the guy that announces us. You love that. Because yeah. Sharon <laughs> loves I the do. English accent. Jane Austen. Love she, Jane Austen. Yeah, and, and, when, <laughs> and when I walk into her room where she's watching television, <laughs> it's usually English, and I'm going, you should have been born in England, because that's your kind of people. Well, I think my great-grandparents were born in England. That's right. Yeah. Ogden, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We have a special guy with us today, yeah. and, and in my 30-minute interview, it's going to be a two-parter, so you will hear the first part of his book, and then I'm going to talk about the second part of his life. Mm -hmm. You won't know when that's happening, <laughs> but ride with me, okay? <laughs> his name is Russ Murphy. Mm -hmm. He's an award-winning singer, songwriter, with 11 number one songs on the inspirational country music chart, which, by the way, is my favorite kind of music. <laughs> I know a lot of you folks love contemporary and all this other kind of stuff, but I am a gospel music. Mm -hmm. uh, that's just gospel quartets. That's just my thing, okay? Uh, it, there was a person recently that, that I know they like all contemporary. And, and I, so I said to them, I said, you love contemporary? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And, and I, because contemporary lovers, when they hear country music, they go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and country music people, when they hear the contemporary stuff, we go, oh, great. Yeah, there you go. You know, seven words, seven times repeated, you know, anyway. So, this, so you like uh, the very things I like. Uh, he is a three-time winner of the ICM Songwriter of the Year, and he is a three ICM Song of the Year awards before... Uh, his movie in 2006. Good before, night. before his movie. Uh, our move. Oh, move. Our I'm move. Sorry. I can't read <laughs> what's typed here. Before his move in 2006. It's, it could be something's coming up. Well, it could be. Uh, to Nashville, Tennessee, to pursue a music career, Russ uh, served as the university minister at Indiana Baptist Church in Lubbock, te Texas. His local ministry grew from nine students to over 1,400 weekly and right. ultimately became the largest church-based university ministry in the world. And wow. now Russ has a musical and teaching ministry across the nation. Glad to be here. Yes. Thank Good you. See, that's, just, you Russ. that's just one guy I'm talking about. <laughs> we, we just made that up. I haven't done anything. <laughs> this, this book is. And now he's an author. Oh. Yes, this book. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I interview and read so many books, but mm -hmm. very few of them, when you start reading them, you go, what a story. Mm -hmm. So we're only going to go into, you know, very quick sound bites of his story. So you have to get the book. Yeah. You'll see the website with his ministry if you want to contact him and come to your church or wherever you want. But this is an opportunity for you to read a phenomenal testimony. Start. Your birthplace and your environment. Uh, birthplace was Waco, Texas. Okay. Uh, middle class family moved around a lot. Moved to California. You were a twin. I have twin sisters. Uh, one, oh, okay. One of them passed okay. away about ten years right. ago. So, so twin sisters. Oh yeah, and uh, identical. Identical, and when you are four years old and you have two little baby girls and they're identical, people don't even know who you are anymore. <laughs> so, how, how old were you when they were? I was I was like three and a half when they were born. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So. Okay. Now, the environment you lived in, give us a picture. Okay, small town, moved to a place called Hubbard, Texas, and my parents uh, never hurt us in any way except they hurt each other, and they were both alcoholics, and at nighttime, they would have fights, and so from the time I was about 10 years old till 11, 11 and a half, I slept with my clothes on because I had to protect my little sisters because they were in the next room uh, next to my parents, and so there was a gun in the house. It never was fired or picked up, but I was ready at any time to take, get my sisters out of the house should that happen. So now this this is the part of the wow. book that, that shocked me. Okay. As a mom, mm -hmm. you would you would really be touched by this. Mom dropped me off at school. 
I never saw her again for years. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How old were you then? Uh, 11, 11 years old. And she'd been drinking more and more. In fact, was after my birthday, I, one thing I asked her, she said, or she asked me, she said, what do you want for your birthday? I said, would you not drink that night? And she still drank and got drunk. So uh, a few days later when she took us to school, she was really struggling so bad. She was a good person. I mean, she was, if she were here right now and not been drinking, you'd think, what a beautiful, wonderful, kind mm -hmm. lady. Uh, but when she get, took me uh, to school that day and, and dropped me off, uh, when she drove away, I didn't see her again for about four years. I saw her one or two times before she was uh, shot and killed in Houston, Texas by her second husband. Oh. And so when I left her that morning, that afternoon, it, she was gone. It's amazing how they go from mm. abuse to abuse. Mm -hmm. to right. The, it, it, it's almost like a, a magnet. It's a never-ending cycle they get into. Yeah. Now tell me about how, with that kind of environment, Yeah. <laughs> here comes this guy, <laughs> Russ, that has all of this stinking talent. Where did that come from? Well, it came from God. You know, from the time I was very little, I was always picking out songs on the piano. And uh, when I was 12 years old, got my first guitar. And just music was just a part of my life. It just seemed like a God-given, it seemed easy for me. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed music too. So when some people go, I have to practice my guitar a lot. I, I didn't practice. I played every day though for hours. Was I practicing? I guess so, but it was so much fun. I was just playing, yeah. having a good time. Okay, now take me to that point to your college life. You had high school, high and school. You, were, you were always very athletic, right? I played football and ran track, and I uh, enjoyed that a lot. That's too. athletic. Yeah, I had a few scholarship <laughs> offers, and so. <laughs> yeah. See, just, you know, it's like, he plays down what he's doing. If I had what he has, I'd go, listen to this. Well, actually, uh, I was a very skinny running back who could run pretty fast, but once you caught me, it, you would hurt me. <laughs> you know? And so, uh, in fact, the, the uh, pastor of Denton Bible Church, Tom Nelson, was our quarterback, and he would just pitch me the ball and say, run, Russ. <laughs> and uh, I could do about five yards for everybody swarm me, but I had uh, some football scholarship offers. And I said, you know what? I just really, I'm, I'm good. I'm done with that for right now. So mm -hmm. I think I'll just stick to playing guitar. Okay. Now, in college, right. uh, how were you? Good? Uh, you know, I, I struggled some. My grades went up and down, but I, I finally got together. I, I was there at Texas Tech University, and I was there with my fiance at the time, Sarah Lynn, and she was a real good studier. So I just kind of watched her habits and all that. And did you have did you have this s deep anger? No. Because of your childhood? No. You you didn't have any mm. any of that. That's amazing. No, I didn't. That, that just blows my mind. Yeah. Well, my grandparents lived three blocks from us, and my granddad and grandmother had mm. the best marriage, and so I spent every day with them at some point. T tell See, the story. That's of, healing. Tell the story about about your grandfather. You got kind of lippy with your grandmother. I didn't mean to, but uh, my grandmother had a young picture of her on the dresser, and I just phrased it wrong, okay? I was only about <laughs> nine years old. I just phrased it bad, and I said, uh, hey, Mima, you used to be pretty. Well, I didn't mean that she wasn't pretty then, but I can see how she, yeah. and she kind of walked out and uh, I could tell she was kind of hurt her feelings. And my granddad was sitting there with a Hubbard paper and he kind of rattled it. And he just out of the blue, just said, I have lots of grandkids. I didn't know if he's talking to me or what. And then he kind of turned the page and shook it again. You know, Russ, I got lots of grandkids. And uh, then about this time, he folded the paper down, looked at me and says, uh, I've got lots of grandkids. I've only got one princess. Don't you ever talk to her that way again because oh. you're disposable. <laughs> and uh, he didn't mean that. And, yeah. But I won't But you got it. I got it. And what he was telling me is that besides Jesus Christ, your wife, having her as your princess and love of this life is everything. You treat her like a princess. Okay, let's take that story to meeting Sarah Lynn. Okay, I met Sarah Lynn in high school. When we first uh, got together, we went. We were just like Jack and Jill, just brother and sister. Okay, no, uh, no hold, holding hands, no kissing or anything. I. But what was it? This is where this book come from originally. Is that she loved Christ as Savior, Lord, and friend. I, I knew Him as Savior and Lord. We tussled on that some, of course. But I know you could know Him as friend. And she seemed so comfortable and just like she had a friendship with Him, like she had with me or anybody. And I just and I told the Lord when I was 17 years old. I said. Someday I want to know you as friend the way she does. And uh, started that process yeah. then. 
not knowing we were getting married or anything. Yeah. And about two months after um, she passed away and I was in my real crying time, I would every day in, in my house in Nashville, I would just five or six sessions worth of just circling, just walking, just walking and crying, yeah. grab my Kleenex, blow my nose, throw them on the floor, pick them up later. I went to the restroom to wash my face. And uh, when I looked at myself, I saw how horrible I looked. Uh, my hair was just matted to my forehead with sweat. Eyes were almost shut, swollen, all kind of stuff on my face, with sweat rings. And I apologized to Jesus. I said, I am so sorry. I look so horrible. I'm, I'm your son, and this shows such a lack of faith. And I didn't really feel his touch, you know, sorry, uh, physically, but I, I felt him come in there and say, you've never looked more beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. And I said, beautiful, I look gruesome. He said, no, for a man to hurt as much as you're hurting and to still love mm -hmm. me and not turn your back on me, you've never looked more beautiful in your entire life. And that's when it happened, I said, and that's when I felt him almost say, I am so proud of you, Russ, my friend. I said, mm -hmm. there's a friendship I've been looking for all those years. Yeah. Uh, this yeah. is amazing, uh, and, uh, and, and this guy, <laughs> Every female would love to meet a guy like this because when you read the book, what his grandfather said there, he, you <laughs> became that. I did. I mean, it was, it's like you were branded with that statement forever. Mm -hmm. Now, let me, let me read this. Uh, in 2014, Sarah Lynn asked. Now, this is amazing. She said, sweetheart, what time is it? He said, 10, 15, ask, why do you want to know? Sarah Lynn says, because this is the happiest moment of my entire life. And a few hours later, what happened? A few hours later, <coughs> excuse me, um, we were in, in Lubbock, Texas, uh, traveling and singing. She didn't sing with me, but she in the summertime. And uh, she woke up about four. She said, uh, sweetheart, I, I, I feel funny. And I said, well, what do you mean funny? She said, there's some pressure on my chest over here. And I said, you talking about hospital? She said, yeah. So I called 911. They were right down the street, and they got there within two or three minutes. And EMS got her to the hospital, and they ran tests on her all day long. And uh, she swam every day. She was in perfect shape. Her lots of longevity in her, in her family. So I thought for sure she's going to live to 90, 95, who not beyond. Mm -hmm. Dave, can you show a picture of Sarah Lynn? That, yeah. that one that we captured, right there she is. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's Sarah Lynn and Russ at the ICM award show in 2012. Mm -hmm. Just to give you a little idea. And this idea. is 2014 you're talking yeah. about mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. And uh, we, uh, the, they came out and said, Mr. Murphy and Ms. Murphy, we ran tests all day long. We can't find out anything that's wrong, really. Her pain level never got to over three or four, so it wasn't like she was in excruciating pain. We had to deal with that. And she had a real high threshold of pain. So they came in and said, if you want to stay all night for just observation, I was already there with my duffel bag and all that watching the College World Series yeah. mm -hmm. about the same time. Yeah. And she said, I better go back to the house. And I was like, why don't we stay here tonight? We just watch, yeah. you know, watch baseball. And, she said, no, I'm ready to go back to the house. It wasn't our house. It was friends, Welby and Luana Smith. You don't have to get detailed. Just move okay. right into it. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, got there, and she came to the kitchen to have some chicken noodle soup, and her head went forward, and I thought she passed out from the activities of the day. And uh, got her on the floor, and I looked into her eyes, and I realized my wife just died. Wow. And she had come, what had happened, her aorta had come undone from the inside, unraveled. So all day long, she was bleeding internally, mm -hmm. and she actually bled to death mm -hmm. in my arms. And, and there's no pain to that. Well, it can be. I mean, Probably dull pain. Uh, dull, and um, I've read I read a lot, lot about it, so it's different for everybody. But so you moved from this statement mm -hmm. to the kitchen floor, where to she, the kitchen floor, where I get to give her to Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, so you held her. I held. I, it was so amazing. Um, I travel, so and she was a high school teacher, so. What if my neighbor had called and said, Russ, i got some horrible news. We just found Sarah Lynn dead. Oh, my gosh. You know, was she crawling out for me? Was she in pain? Even if she had died in another room, yeah. was she looking out for me? Was she clutching her chest? Mm -hmm. No, I was there when she took her last breath. Mm -hmm. And I saw her actually take her last breath here and her first breath in heaven. Wow. So and that, that was a blessing from God. To okay. Me. Let's move from there okay. to your new life. Because... 
you had to recover. You just gave us a little picture of what it felt like looking at yourself in the mirror. Oh boy. And realizing that this guy you were looking at had never experienced this kind of pain. Ever. 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 It, it hurt. <laughs> and, and Dave, show the picture of his new life. <laughs> oh, that's cute. <laughs> Just that absorb what is going on there, Russ <laughs> and Linda Murphy. That's in 2015. Mm -hmm. And I want you, our audience, to meet Dave. Mm -hmm. Put the camera on Linda's face. <laughs> <laughs> this is his new mm -hmm. blessing that that you've got to hear this testimony and I'm going to let Linda if you would start <laughs> okay. about how you felt about Russ going all the way and you know now don't okay. shortcut it okay you can keep a lot of the details <coughs> out, you okay. know, like if he had a pimple on his <laughs> cheek or whatever and you didn't squeeze leave that out Thank you. but 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 happily st yeah, start <laughs> when you first set eyes on Russ well, it was in college, and he walked into the room, and I said, thank you, God, you have made me a man. I just fell immediately in love with him, and I was ready to tell him until a mutual friend grabbed me and said, you know he has a serious girlfriend. And I was like, no. He said, you know you're in the way. <laughs> no. So I left him alone because I, I thought that was a sacred relationship. Sure. But then I met his girlfriend, Sarilyn, and fell in love with her, and we got to be good friends. Then Russ and I started, they got married. And then we started singing together, Russ and I and another guy. And uh, it was just an incredible time. But at that time, I started praying, Lord, if you ever want me to be married, and I'm not sure you do, but if you do, would you please send me a Russ Murphy type? <laughs> because I loved the way he loved the Lord. I loved the way he loved his wife. I loved the team they were together. And I said, God, I want to do that for you. Mm -hmm. And um, I loved his music, of course, because I was a musician too. Mm -hmm. So it was like, he's, he's the perfect package, God. Give me one like you. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, this is my, I didn't this know is my ideal. I didn't yeah. know all this. Yeah. 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 He never knew. I yeah. never, 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 never said anything to them about it because <laughs> I wouldn't do that. But we went our separate ways. And um, I, I, I was telling him the other day, a friend asked me one time about 10 years ago or so, said, is there anybody in your past? You know, everybody wants me to get married. I never got married. Mm -hmm. I was engaged two and so, a half times. So for 40 years while he's she married. She was engaged two, two and, and a half, half times? times. That's another book. <laughs> There's another story in there. Yeah, there is a story. So for 40 years, yeah. you wanted this kind of guy. I did, and I was engaged to wonderful men, but I realized. Yeah, because they may be watching right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I bet they are. <laughs> they're, they're married, and I've sung at their wedding, so okay. it's all good. But, um, they loved me at the time more than the Lord. And I just Ooh. kept thinking, God, I want to do this your way. And I need someone who will encourage me to come to you rather than getting between me and you oh, yeah. type of thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I just, and I, I didn't think about him specifically during that time, but somebody asked me about 10 years ago, is there anybody in your past that you would want to, you know, like, do you remember a, a college friend or a high school friend? And I was like, there's only one guy, but he's married, happily married, and that's not going to happen. So. And that was him. <laughs> so um, the night, uh, Sarah and they were in Lubbock, and she closed her computer and told him, I just asked Linda Huckabee to be friends on Facebook. And I was so excited yeah. when I saw that. I was like, oh, I, I can't wait to touch base with them, see where they are. And, mm -hmm. and um, my first question to him when we talked was, <laughs> are you still singing? <laughs> I had yeah. no idea what they were doing. So. Um, she did that, closed her computer, and then she suddenly died the next day. Now you, you've got to tell the this. Next day. The next you, day. You've got to tell this part of it. Yeah. You were having a conversation with Sarlin, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and she was saying, "What do you think you would do if if I passed?" Right. And it was like we've had those conversations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And she's and. And you said, well, I'm not even, you know, because that that's there. not even a conversation. <laughs> yeah, she said, well, no, uh, what, and so I don't know whether you ask or whatever. What, she says, well, let me tell you, the kind of person mm -hmm. I hope you marry if I'm gone <laughs> is like a ben Linda Huckabee. Huckabee. We thought she was married. If somebody like her. Yeah. yeah. Somebody her. like her. She's using her as the example. Now continue. I still get chills. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, God, you had this plan. Um, and she was healthy at that time, I oh mean, no, never knowing anything would ever mm -hmm. take place. She never took an aspirin, yeah. ever. Wow. Yeah. 
Continue. Well, and he says it beautifully. He said it's as if God reached down and touched his first wife and had her take the hand of his second wife and bring me to him. That sounds like I wouldn't voice. have known. That yeah. like it had, what it had well, it, I wouldn't have known. It had been 40 years, and I might have heard eventually that his wife had died or mm -hmm. something. But, you know, I was in a different state and different places. So how did you like find that. out that she had died? I went on Facebook to answer her friend request. Mm -hmm. And I started reading the pages that said, we, we miss our aunt so much. She was so dear to us. And I thought, who is Sarahlyn's aunt? I don't remember her having an aunt. Right. So I kept reading to find out the name so I could say to Sarahlyn, I'm so sorry about your mm -hmm. aunt. And then finally somebody said, Aunt Sarahlyn, I can't believe you're gone. And I just lost it. <laughs> oh, wow. I couldn't believe it. And then I was crying for me, but then I thought, God, how can you do that to Russ? <laughs> they were Russ and Sarahlyn, you know, like yeah. salt and pepper. Yeah. You said mm -hmm. both names together, not one or the other. And so I just, I friended him so I could pray for him. I had no thoughts of getting married. I had told God when I turned 60, Lord, I'm sorry I've wasted all your time praying about a man. I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm done. I'm on, we're on the same page now because you obviously <laughs> don't want me to be married. So we're good. So I had no thought of anything happening mm -hmm. here. I mean, and I was just horrified for him that he'd lost his dear Sarah Lynn. Now, it's, now, <laughs> what, what is amazing is the first time you saw her, after 40 years. Oh, yeah. Tell me about, did you get out of the car? Or I did, and you, and I, I know in the book you talk about, I saw those eyes. Mm hmm And I remembered. The smile. Well, that smile. Yeah. yeah. Now, talk about, I mean, when you first laid eyes on cry. him. <laughs> can, that's a great smile. I just smile. adore him. That's a, that's a just yeah. him. Um, we got out of the car, and we had talked about being in love on the phone before we yeah. met, but being hesitant and not sure is so fast and yeah. we need to be friends and all this. So I got out of the car thinking, what do I do when I see him? And he was parking as I got out. So I kind of hid behind my car and peeked out. <laughs> Hi, Russ. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he came up and gave me a pat on the back. I said, oh, I haven't seen you in 40 years. Give me a hug. There so we gave him a hug. And I just kept thinking, Lord, hold on to my heart. I don't want to go ahead of you. I don't want right. to do anything you don't want. And I don't want to mess up this new friendship we're building yeah. with my heart. And, mm -hmm. and I told you I wasn't going to get married. I'm sorry. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you had other plans. So you're yeah. messing with me now. Yeah. Well, we made it about halfway through dinner, and he said, may I hold your hand? And I was, I was holding on, eating like this, holding on the table, and I was like, oh, man. Yeah. And then I went, okay. <laughs> but the minute I held his hand, it was just, it sounds sappy, but it was just like, um, this is home. Yeah. This and is where my hand belongs. Russ, at one point broke to you that something is happening uh -huh. and he was almost embarrassed thinking yeah. all I've got to have is Linda say oh that's nice yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> and that he explained to you something was taking place mm -hmm. and then you said back to him well he he told me at the table he said I I love you I'm in love with you and I want to go further and I was like yes <laughs> and I said well I've been in love with you for about 43 years <laughs> and of course I told him not him but I was in love with that relationship right. that he had with his wife and I wanted all my life I've never slept with a man I never got married and I just kept saying God I want to do this your way That's amazing I don't I I was tempted I got in some situations I had been abused as a child all these things but I just said God I want to do this your way wow. and when he told me he was in love with me I was like <laughs> you know? oh, I mean, it's just, it's been amazing. And for God to give someone like me, someone like him, who's chose at 14, he chose at 14, made the decision, I'm going to love my wife, and that's going to be my number one thing I do. I'm going to do that better than anybody in the world. Mm -hmm. And for God to that's give great. me someone like that. Is just blessing upon blessing upon. And you both have music in your background. Oh, yeah. no, we great. Sing, we yeah. sing together now. We do concerts all the yeah. time. And uh, we uh, <laughs> do a, a seminar now called A Crisis of Faith at other churches. Mm -hmm. So we're just, we're having the best time. The, yeah. Put their web, website up, Dave, if you would, because the, the, if you'd like them for ministry, there it is. Yeah. And then if you'd like yeah. this book, you can mm -hmm. find all of that if you go to that website, www.russministries.com. Right. Russ Murphy Ministries. Russ Murphy Ministries. Right. Com. Yeah. Uh, I'm dyslectic. I see everything. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Uh, the, this is impromptu, and I know singers hate this. <laughs> Just give me three phrases, three phrases. in a song. Um, glory to his name? No. I do, oh, Lord, you're beautiful.
but this, you have to sing oh, with me. Okay. Oh, oh Lord, you're beautiful. Your face is all I seek. For when your eyes are on this child, your grace abounds to me. Oh, that's beautiful. Wow. Great. He, need, he needed the guitar right here. He does. Yeah. He does. Yeah. He's amazing with that. And the, the reason you heard that little hoarseness, yeah. she's still crying. I know. <laughs> I know what that's all about. I love about. our story, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of uh, probably women out there that have never found the right one that would this would you, be a great you, book to read you are such a revelation oh, exactly. to people yeah. mm -hmm. that have to kind of done what wait. you did lord mm -hmm. okay yeah it's not going to happen you know there's so many girls nowadays that are so anxious to get married right. so much I want that to they say. make the worst mistake of their right. lives because they want to be married yeah. so bad yeah. Yeah. you know and then they regret it yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. you know because they know they they rushed too much they yeah. didn't yeah. take time to ask the Lord if that's the one yeah. I've gotten some emails recently and texts and everything people wanting me to, to write a book or write something well, you, about you need to, how did you wait and how did you find you need to. Him? Yeah. I didn't exactly. find him God brought you guys ought to be doing marriage seminars we've talked about because well, you know, I've heard people uh, uh, this guy has such I, I mean he has such a love mm -hmm. for his wife Sarah Lynn and now Linda that somehow that's got to be as a gift to people in that audience mm -hmm. as a marriage seminar say if you deliver this to that one you want to marry or the one that you're going yes. with you will never regret oh, yeah. yes. the rest of your life exactly. you have no regrets and oh. the fact that you kept yourself for wow. him yes. after 40 some years yeah. tells the whole story we are I, I hate to do this to you <laughs> yeah. but one minute Okay. That's 60 seconds, okay. man. <laughs> Share Christ with somebody watching. That's your camera. Right okay. There. All right. Well, Jesus Christ is my best friend now. And I tell you what he is. He's also my Savior and my Lord. And uh, in my darkest hour, he's the one who stood by my side and held me up, kept me going, gave me breath. And I just told him when my wife passed away, I said, Christ, I'm going to hang on to you for all I've got. And you know, it's not about you being religious. It's about you just saying, Jesus, I need you in my heart. I give my life to you the best I know how. I'm gonna trust you for my salvation and also for my every day. He will not let you down. You are not alone. Amen. 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 The title of the book. <laughs> that, that was good. <laughs> He's good. That, that was really pretty good. <laughs> Did you practice that? No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. That's good, honey. Remember, this could be the beginning of the rest of your life. Right. Jesus Christ is your answer. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you for watching It's Time. If you have recently made a decision for Christ, Herman and Sharon would like to hear from you.